Hello and welcome back. My name is Casey. If you're new here, I'm the designer behind Pattern Scout. So if I sound slightly different, it's because I have Invisalign. I got my Invisalign put on yesterday and I'm still kind of practicing speaking with this appliance in my mouth. So far it hasn't been too bad, but definitely S's and Z's are a little bit challenging. So if I sound a little bit different, that is why. Um, anyhow, this week I am going to be working on a couple of projects. Last week I was home visiting family for Thanksgiving. I did work on a pair of pants, the green twill pants that I've talked about in previous videos. I worked on those a little bit when I was home with my family and really all I got through was the zipper construction and I did like a kind of rough fitting of the pants, but I did film it and I thought I could do a quick little zipper tutorial. I do have another video where I made a pair of jeans. I copied a pair of ready to wear jeans that I really liked and turned it into a pattern that I could use over and over again. That is the same pattern that I'm using for these twill pants. In that tutorial, I also show how to construct a zipper fly on a pair of pants or on a pair of jeans. But I wanted to show the tutorial again for this green pair of pants because one of the things that I wanted to try out something a little bit different than what I did last time was moving the zipper closer to the center front seam. In previous pairs of jeans that I've made, I think the zipper has been pushed too far over to the left, my left side. And that creates a little bit of extra bulk in the zipper, I think, because it doesn't kind of keep that closure really close to that seam. And therefore the zipper opening on the front can kind of bulge out a little bit or it's not as flush with the pants. So on my ready to wear jeans, I was noticing that the zipper was much closer to the center front, kind of more toward the edge of the fly instead of kind of tucked back into the fly. So I wanted to kind of experiment with the placement of that a little bit and that's what I did on this green pair of pants. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out and I'm gonna to continue to use that method going forward when I sew pants. So anyway, I will show you now kind of my favorite method for constructing a zipper fly on a pair of jeans. To start, I just interfaced both flies on the front legs. Then I'm going to align the front legs right sides together, aligning the fly and the crotch seam. And I'm gonna sew along the fly and the crotch seam. Now for the fly portion of this stitch, I am doing a basting stitch. So I'm choosing the longest stitch length on the machine, which is four millimeters for this machine. And that varies by machine. Once I get down to the bottom of the fly, I'm going to change back to a regular stitch length. So I'm doing about a two and a half millimeter stitch length and then continue sewing along the crotch seam at a five eighths inch seam allowance. I also wanna clip into the crotch seam right below the fly to release that seam allowance a little bit. Next, I'll just press the fly open to prepare for the zipper installation. I'm just using a basic navy blue jeans zipper. This one is seven inches, and normally I would align the edge of the zipper tape with the center seam of the jeans. For this pair, I'm actually going to shift it so that the edge of the zipper teeth align with that center seam, and I've got it pinned in place. Then I wanna flip the jeans legs out of the way just so that the fly is exposed and stitch the zipper down to that right side of the fly only. And I'm stitching this about 1 16th inch away from the zipper teeth. And I couldn't get all the way to the top of the zipper because of the zipper pull. So I'm just gonna pull that out of the way and finish stitching right at the top of the zipper to secure that. Again, getting very close to the zipper teeth. Once I have the zipper secured to the right side of the fly, I can then flip the fly underneath so that the zipper is now face up. And I'm just going to top stitch that fold right along the edge of the zipper. And then I'll go about halfway and then lift the presser foot and zip the zipper up so that I can continue stitching down the length of the zipper without the zipper pull getting in the way. Now I can secure the zipper to the other side of the fly. So I've got the zipper laid flat here and both sides of the fly open. Now I just want to flip the fly assembly over. Now they're both pressed open and I'm pinning the other side of the fly to the zipper tape. Now the zipper is face down on both sides now and I'm gonna stitch this to the other side of the fly, again, very close to the zipper. And in this case, I can't unzip the zipper, so I'm just gonna get as close as I can to that zipper pull and then I will secure that later. I don't have my serger at my parents' house, so I'm just gonna use a dense zigzag stitch along the edge of the fly to help prevent that from fraying. So I'll stitch right along the edge there and then when I finish, I'm just gonna go through and kind of trim off some of these little loose threads. So this is basically like a faux serger stitch. 
Now I want to top stitch the edge of that side down. That's the left side when it's facing me. And I'm just going to trace along the edge of that from the exterior. I'm using my Chaco liner here to trace around where I want to stitch. And I'm kind of just feeling for it to see where I want to stitch it. And I'm also going to pin this in place to make sure it stays in place when I sew it. I'll take this over to the machine and top stitch around the edge just inside of that line because that line represents the very edge of that fly. So I want to st top stitch right inside that line. And I ended up doing two rows of top stitching for this. Now that the zipper is installed, I just want to install a fly shield. So this is just a little flap of fabric that covers the zipper on the inside and aligns with that left side of the fly. I have attached it to the right side of the fly with a zigzag stitch and I'm just trimming off the excess there. Then I just want to add two bar tacks at the bottom of the fly to secure the fly shield on the interior so it's not flopping around. And you can see here how those bar tacks look from the exterior and then if we flip it over you can see that the bottom of the fly shield is secured to the pants and it's still able to open at the top. Now that the fly is installed, I can use a seam ripper to open up the center front seam where I sewed that basting stitch at the very beginning of the zipper installation. And now I can baste the pants legs together to do a fitting. The last step that I did when I was home working on these at my parents' house was I basted the side seam and the end seam together so that I could try this on and make sure that I like the fit. I'm pretty happy with the fit. The only thing that I need to fix is I need to take in the darts a little bit more at the back waist. I am getting a little bit of gaping there. I really like the zipper construction on this. I think these are gonna be really nice and flat on the front here, which I like. Um, I think the length is pretty good. I will hem these up just a little bit. They're actually not looking as flared as they will eventually look but just because the seams aren't really pressed. So you can see there when I hold my leg like that, it looks a little more flared. Originally I was thinking that I was gonna put like the kind of traditional cargo style pockets, basically that would be like a kind of slanted or curved opening here and then come straight down on the thigh. I have changed my mind. I actually think I wanna do some cute little patch pockets here on the front and I think that'll just be really cute. I'm gonna give it like a, I don't know, like a little 70s vibe. Um, and that'll just be really easy to attach. I'm gonna take these apart and take out the basting stitches on the side seams and the inseam. That'll make it easier to get those patch pockets on the front. And then I will put it back together and I'm gonna finish the seams the way that I wanna finish them. I'm probably gonna finish the inseam with a flat felt seam and then I'll finish the side seams with a serger. So yeah. And then I'll add the waistband and all that good stuff. So. Moving on. With the pants taken apart, I can now attach the patch pockets to the front and the back of the pants. And I'm just pinning these in place and I'm gonna sew around the perimeter with top stitching in two rows of top stitching. And I'm gonna be basically using two rows of top stitching and a lot of the detailing just to kind of keep everything consistent throughout the pants design. Once I have the pockets attached, I can attach the legs together. First, I'm going to do the inseam and I'm gonna do this in one stitch sewing all the way from the hem of one side to the hem of the other side of the leg. Then I'm going to serge that seam allowance to clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna do a faux flat felled seam. So I'm not actually gonna do a legit flat felled seam. I'm going to just serge this and then press the seam allowance toward the back leg. And then I will top stitch that in place with a double row of top stitching. I'll do the same thing for the side seams, sewing with a straight stitch, then cleaning it up with the serger. And I'm not gonna be able to do the faux flat felled seam along the entire length of the leg. So I'm just gonna do it about six inches down from the waist. And then once I have the side seams done, I can start installing the waistband. 
So if you want to see a little bit more information about how I construct a waistband, you can check out that video that I was talking about where I made the jeans, the jeans that I copied from a pair of ready to wear jeans. And I go into a lot of detail on the entire construction process for a pair of jeans in that video. So be sure to check that out. I'll link that in the cards up here and down below in the description below this video. I've just interfaced the exterior portion of the waistband and then the interior portion of the waistband is uninterfaced. I've got this pinned all the way around the top of the waist of the pants and I'm just going to sew this on and then I will flip everything over and finish it on the interior. Now one thing that I want to make sure that I do and something that I've actually kind of forgotten to do on a couple of pairs of pants and on my jacket that I made in the last video is reinforcing the buttonhole location. Um, I've made this mistake a couple of times recently where I didn't really fully interface those areas and then the buttonholes got a little bit stretched out and kind of wonky and didn't really hold their shape very well. So I'm gonna go in on this one once I get this sewn on and interface right where the buttonhole is gonna be and where the button is gonna be on these pants just to make sure that it's extra sturdy there. Oh, I feel like I'm struggling so hard to talk right now with this Invisalign in. I feel like I sound a little bit like Daffy Duck. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I'm also tired because it's just the end of the day and my mouth just does not wanna move quickly enough for the words to come out that are in my brain. Anyhow, um, I'm gonna sew this waistband on, then I will work on the buttonhole and the button and um, I'm also gonna add some belt loops. Another pair of pants in the books. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Although the fabric for these pants is a little, it's a little weird. I mean, it's got a little bit of stretch to it, but it is actually quite stiff. So I'm kind of curious to see how it wears and how it stretches after wearing, if it has any recovery at all. <laughs> if it stretches out, if it just stays stretched out. I'm looking in my mirror right now. I'm actually pretty pleased with how these turned out. I love the style of these pants. I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of these. I decided not to hem the pants just yet because they're already unhemmed at a length that I really like. If I do decide that I wanna add a hem onto these, I'll probably have to add like a little cuff of fabric on the bottom of these pants. But I may kinda of live with them with the raw hem for a little bit and see how I like it. <laughs> so it may end up being something I like better as a raw hem anyway, so we'll see. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, I love making pants. They're one of my favorite things to make. They're kind of like outerwear for me. They have a lot of kind of fussy details at certain points, but then once you finish, it's just something to be really proud of. And that's why I love making them so much. Also, as a tall person, I always have a hard time finding pants that are long enough for me, especially when it comes to the flared and wide leg styles, though it's just impossible for me to find pants that are long enough, unless I wanna spend a lot of money. And I mean, the reality is I end up spending a lot of time and money on my sewing projects but I have a lot more pride in those projects than I do in the items that I've bought from a store. 
So I don't know, it's a little bit of give and take, a little pro and con situation, but I get a lot of personal satisfaction out of making pants and outerwear and you know, pretty much a, a lot of things. I also really love the color of these pants. I think they're gonna work really well with a lot of the items in my closet and a lot of the items that I've been making for my fall wardrobe. They also look really great with a vintage coat that I thrifted a couple of years ago. I got this coat at the St. Vincent de Paul thrift store here in Lansing. That is one of my favorite thrift stores. They have so many cool things. They have like a little vintage section. I have found a lot of really cool stuff there. If thrifting is something that you guys are into and you'd like me to share more about that kind of thing, let me know down in the comments. I definitely do a fair amount of thrifting. I love going every now and then. And if it's something that you guys would be interested in, I'd be happy to share more about that here on the channel. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.